$100,000. Yes, a hundred grand. Sim racing can be incredibly expensive to get into, but it doesn't have to be because today we're taking a look at a solid setup that costs less than a grand. Heck, in fact, it costs less than 600 bucks. We bought and built the cheapest sim rig to show you it takes hundreds, not thousands, to have huge fun racing with a wheel. Today, we'll show you exactly which parts we chose to build it with, talk to you about how much we like it, and at the end, decide if it's more fun to race with this or this. And stick around till the end because we're gonna run through some of the best racing games that you can play right now, and everything we talk about is linked in the first comment below, so go check them out yourself. I'm Brad, this is Ideal, and let's go. Okay, so we wanted something cheap, durable, and fun. So the first thing we had to do was get a great cockpit. And the one we landed on is the Next Level GT Lite. It has over 3,000 positive ratings on Amazon, and here's why. It's well-designed, with controls to adjust your racing position easily, so you're comfortable when you're spending hours in the chair. The back, it's breathable, so you don't get that nasty back sweat like I used to get sitting in my other chair. And we'll get to what wheel, gear shifter, and pedals we picked, but this chair can accommodate many different models. Plus, it's easily foldable, so you can stow it away when not in use, saving marriages all over the world. Oh, okay, so for the wheel, you know Logitech is a brand that consistently makes high quality products. And so going with the Logitech G920 just made sense. It feels solid in your hands, and it's constructed with premium materials that have held up amazingly well after logging hundreds of miles. Its secret weapon is the brilliant force feedback and smooth steering performance. That's thanks to its gear-driven technology. And yes, while it's not quite as good as a direct drive wheel, ah! you know, something like this G-Pro, which is a great wheel. Yeah, we've driven more expensive wheels and having this level of feel at this price point is pretty incredible. Also, the stainless steel paddle shifters give great feedback. If you're into flappy paddles, that is. So for less than 300 bucks, you get a high quality wheel paired with a set of frankly awesome pedals. Speaking of pedals, for a set that's made primarily from plastic, they are extremely sturdy. Plus, it includes that third one on your left for those who like to shift it themselves. So it's easy to see why it has 4.6 out of 5 stars with almost 20,000 reviews on Amazon. And because we've got a clutch, what's a racing without a little gear shift in magic? Well, the Logitech G Driving Force Shifter is here to spice it up. It's fully compatible with the wheels and pedals. It's sleek. And although the shifting feel is on the lighter side, it makes the driving experience 100% more fun. For the price, it is an incredible value. And with 4.6 out of 5, with almost 20,000 reviews, a lot of people, well, they agree with me. This budget setup not only looks good, but it feels good when you're in it. And it got me absolutely hooked on playing racing games in a sim. So the million dollar question, which one is faster, a controller or a sim rig? To set lap times, well, I went out and did what anybody else would do. I got the Stig. Okay, well, maybe it's just Trav, but that's what we got. After hundreds of intense laps and a few failed attempts, well, the controller on average was a little bit faster. But I'm here to tell you the sim rig was way more fun. So should you spend the money and get into a sim rig? Well, the answer is 1000% yes. Now, yes, you may be a bit slower starting out, but after a few hours, you should get the hang of it. What a sim offers you with a wheel, shifters, and pedals, it's a fully immersive motoring experience. And words of wisdom, if you're just getting into sim racing, getting a budget setup like this one, well, it's really the only way to go. There are a lot of people, including my friends, that have tried it for a couple weeks and then they never do it again. So if you're in it in the hundreds, not thousands of dollars, it's a way easier pillow to swallow, especially if it becomes a clothes hanger. Now that you've plopped down the cash and decided to take the plunge into the world of sim racing, it's time to choose a racing game. And guys, we're pretty lucky because there are a lot of great titles to choose from. Widely regarded as the pinnacle of sim racers, iRacing is known for its competitive nature and is continuously updated with new content. It has a high number of active players and utilizes a subscription-based model with additional costs for DLC. Stuff like new cars and tracks. The level of realism and commitment to the sport makes it pretty appealing for serious sim racers. 
Plus, it's got a safety biased ranking system, which helps ensure high standards of racing discipline. Celebrated for its extremely complex physics model and arguably the best tire simulation of any sim racing game in 2023, R-Factor 2 is a favorite amongst hardcore sim racers. The game has a robust modding community, allowing players to customize and expand their experience with custom mods, including seasons, cars, and tracks. It's a feature that provides almost infinite content, making it ideal for players who enjoy experimentation and customization. Known as a well-rounded sim racing title, Automobilista 2 focuses on Brazilian motorsport, but also includes famous cars and tracks from around the world. It uses the game engine from Slightly Mad Studios, the same folks that brought us Project Cars, which contributes to its graphical fidelity. This game is considered a great choice for those seeking a unique sim experience, blending hardcore racing simulation with a distinct Brazilian flavor. ACC is a highly realistic racing game featuring GT3 and GT4 cars. It's the official game of the GT World Challenge series, which contributes to its detailed representation of modern GT racing. ACC has become a staple in the sim racing community, and in my opinion, it's a game every car guy should try out. Plus, AC2 is coming, folks, and we can't wait. Serving a broader audience than games like iRacing, Project Cars 2 is ideal for those transitioning from a more casual racing game to maybe a more authentic sim racing experience. It's particularly noted for being accessible to console gamers and remains a favored choice among many racing communities for its balance of realism and playability. Gran Turismo is the racing series I grew up playing. Known for its realism and ridiculously challenging license tests, Gran Turismo 7 offers a detailed simulation of car physics, a huge variety of cars and tracks, and a sophisticated AI. The realistic driving experience, combined with stunning visuals and a deep customization system, provide a racing experience that's immersive and authentic, without being too overbearing. Plus, with their latest big update, the game really is at its best. Forza Motorsport has got to be one of my all-time favorites. It's the perfect blend of accessibility and realism. It's the game we recommend most if you're more of a casual player just looking to have fun. While the newest release hasn't gotten off to the best start, it's still a game that's huge fun, and as the team at Turn 10 continues to tune out some of the bugs and add in more content, it'll only get better with time. Also, shout out to the Horizon series, those games are all a ton of fun too. Focused on the world of rally racing, this game stands out with its diverse range of rally stages and conditions, requiring players to adapt their driving style. The inclusion of historic rally cars adds a nostalgic element, while the improved handling model and the ability to create custom rally cars enhance the personalized experience. If you like rally games, definitely give this one a try. So, what do you guys think? Are you ready to step up to a sim rig, or if you've already got one, what's your setup? As far as games, I've been playing a lot of Assetto Corsa lately. Brad, he's been glued to the new Forza. But what are you guys playing? What are your gamer tags? Drop them down in the comments below. Go check out one of these ideal videos right over here. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.